Bond has become fantasy. The joy for me of making a Bond picture is that the audience know perfectly well what I'm going to do. They know the ground rules. And the thing is to surprise them, uh, amuse them, entertain them in a great wild farce that you will never see except once a year in a Bond movie. Stand by all cameras. Gold finger. Diamonds are forever, forever, forever. Say live and let die. bring Bond number three in on time, the producers selected a seasoned pro, Guy Hamilton. Hamilton had something else, a relationship with the film's star, Sean Connery. I'd known Sean long before he made Bonds. Uh, we had a little club called the Buxton that we used to uh, <laughs> meet each other. Goldfinger was a bit of a challenge because I began to sense that Bond was becoming a superman and using uh, the things that worked so wonderfully well in the two previous films, it was then not too difficult to have a target and know what we were trying to do. This is gold, Mr. Bond. All my life I've been in love with its color, its brilliance, its divine heaviness. I welcome any enterprise that will increase my stock, which is considerable. I think you've made your point, Goldfinger. Thank you for the demonstration. Choose your next witticism carefully, Mr. Bond. It may be your last. The purpose of our two previous encounters is now very clear to me. I do not intend to be distracted by another. Good night, Mr. Bond. Do you expect me to talk? No, Mr. Bond. I expect you to die. I was asked to do diamonds, and it was a real kick because I'd felt that I'd been away from it long enough to have uh, varying viewpoints and um, I think I'd like to push it a little bit more this way and that. Guy decided to have one last dry run through just to make sure everything was fine before we shot. And the assistant director misunderstood. And when Guy yelled action for the run through, explosions started happening all over the place. and. Guy stood on that oil rig and he was apoplectic, but he was so calm, and that was Guy. I mean, Guy never raised his voice. And the assistant director said, I'm so sorry, Guy. And Guy said, I'll handle it. And he said, Guy, I'll get the people here. He said, I'll handle it. He said, Guy, I don't think you understand the pressure on the thing of someone being an assistant director. He said, I was the assistant director on the African Queen. I was the assistant director on the whatever he started doing with. He said, and I'll handle it. The scorpion. Mother Nature's finest killer, Mr. Wynn. One is never too old to learn from a master, Mr. Kidd. Dr. Tynan, good evening. Who are you? And where's Joe? Joe couldn't make it tonight. I'm Mr. Wint. This is Mr. Kidd. Oh, I see. What's the matter with him? Oh, my wisdom teeth. I haven't had them out yet. Would you mind having a look, Doctor? Of course. I'm not going to hurt you. Just open. No, no, no. Open wide. Everyone who touches those diamonds seems to die. These 
uh, prehistoric monsters. There are about 2,000 of them around here. They're very odd things. They live to 200 years old, so they don't, they're not going anywhere, and that's why you always see them mm -hmm. not moving, but they can <laughs> really shift. And the only piece of information useless, I might add, that I can tell you is if they come at you, zigzag, because they can't zigzag. Oh, but they do move fast, and that's why you've got to be a little bit careful around here. There's a nice one over here, Roger. I'd like you to look at that. That's a croc. That's a croc, because it's got the pointed nose. <laughs> you can come round, and there's another one moving there. See him over there. <clears throat> the pointed nose. They don't move. They stay with their mouths open like that for a very long time, doing absolutely nothing. Okay. We've got one there for you. He looks absolutely stuffed, but believe me, if you start moving, he really starts happening. How old is he? Uh, he's about five, uh, he's about five, six years old. All there, too, floating. That's the sort of shot that we like to get you and them together. On November the 6th, 1973, less than five months after the release of Live and Let Die, director Guy Hamilton rolls cameras on the man with a golden gun. We've done something that's never been done with a car before, because you need a lot of uh, nerve to do another car chase, and I don't mind that if you have something that the public haven't seen, and we've got it. What have you got? Tell us. If you want to see a car turn 360 degrees in the air with James Bond in it, it's worth seeing. That, that sounds pretty dangerous. How, how long did it take you to work that one out? Months. Months. And uh, we shot it once, and the man who did it had never done it before. He just had to trust, again, the computer. I mean, first of all, the computer will tell you whether it's possible or not. I mean, it is the idea of taking a car, taking a car, and you run it up a bridge mm. over a river, and the car will go like that, like that, and land on the other side of the river. It'd be a nice stunt to see. You're not thinking that. I sure am, boy. Never heard of evil can evil. We're going to take you to wonderful places. We're going to show you beautiful girls. We're going to have some suspense. We're going to have some laughs. <laughs> but let's enjoy. Well, that's not bad for rehearsal, is it? Guy Hamilton thinks I'm going to do that again. 
better get the other fellow back to tell you. Oh, yeah.